Hello, this is a podcast on how to use two pieces of software. The first one is Cluster. The second one is Java Tree View to uh, analyze, to filter and analyze uh, microarray data in computational biology. So what you see here on the screen is that I have created a folder on my desktop called Stem Cell Microarray. And in that folder, there is a text file called Stem Cell Microarray Data, and I obtained this off the web. And the first thing I'm going to do is use the cluster program to open up this file and to do some filtering of the data. So cluster has been open. It should look a uh, screen like this. I'm going to go up under File and say Open Data. Uh, go to my wherever my my folder is there there it is and open up stelsem microarray data dot text and I'm going to say open that file and it's now tells me that the file has been loaded and it gives the job a, a name what you should notice there is that there are three thirty five thousand two hundred fifty nine rows in this uh, data set each row is um, is a single gene. And the 16 columns, <coughs> excuse me, 16 columns in this case, the first two columns, and you should have looked at the data already in Microsoft Excel. The first two columns are, the, the first column is the probe ID that's on the DNA microarray plate. The second column is the name of the gene. And the next 14 columns are the, the 14 different cell types that we'll be investigating in this particular activity. As the case study says, what I want to do is I only want those genes that behave differently across the 14 different cell types. I think there's four fibroblasts, I think there are six uh, embryonic stem cells, and I think there are stick six um, induce uh, pure potent stem cells. So I only want to look at those genes that are changing how they behave or changing how they are expressed over these 14 cells. And if a, um, if a gene is changing, that means it has a pretty high standard deviation. You should understand what a standard deviation is. That's a statistical measure of the variability of a set, a set of data. So I'm going to eliminate all of those genes that don't change very much. So I'm going to click on standard deviation gene vector and I'm going to type in a 1.5 there and what that means is it's going to eliminate all those genes that have a standard deviation of 1.5 or less. So again, I'm eliminating those genes that aren't very uh, variable uh, um, over, over the, the, the 14 cell types. I'm going to click on apply filter and notice that it says 1,800 genes out of 35,000 have passed. That means there's only 1,800 genes in this data set that are changing significantly uh, across the 14 different cell types. At the bottom there, you, say, you notice it says done analyzing filters, so I'm going to accept that, and we're done with that screen. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to adjust the data. And as it says in the case study, what you want to do is what's called a median-centered uh, data adjustment. And you should read the example in the case study so you understand what mathematics is being done there. I'm going to click on center genes, and I'm going to click on median because I wanted to center the genes based on the median of the gene data. I'm also going to center the arrays as a, a median-centered array. Again, you should read about what median-centered means. You're going to see that a uh, fair amount during the course. Okay, and I'm going to apply that. Okay, and notice at the bottom it says done adjusting that data. Okay, so I have filtered the data. I've adjusted the data. Um, now I'm going to go up here to the next app, hierarchical. Okay, and what I want to do is I want to say I'm going to cluster the genes and I'm going to cluster the arrays. And there are four different clustering methods. They all have a little different approach. And I'm just going to go ahead and choose, this is the most, probably the most standard one, the average linkage type. I'm going to click on average linkage. And it'll take a minute, and you wait for it at the bottom there to say done clustering. 
Okay, at this point you are done with cluster, so I'm going to quit that and close. And what you should notice now in your folder, and again, it's a really good idea to put all this stuff in a folder so you can find it. I now have four or three other files. I have an ATR file, a CDT file, a GTR file, and then, of course, my original text file. All right, at this point, I'm going to go to Java Tree View, and I'm going to open that, and it gives a pretty plain-looking screen. I'm going to go up under File, and I'm going to say Open. And again, go find, there's my desktop, go find my, where did it go? There it is, my stem cell microarray folder. I'm going to double click on that. And I'm going to open, the file I want to open is the CDT file. That should be the only one that appears. I'm going to open that. And what you're going to get now is a picture of your, of your heat map. Okay. And what you should notice here, if I click anywhere on there, okay, If I click anywhere on there, what I'll see there is a profile for a, a particular gene, and I get the gene name over here. So as I click around, I see the gene name over on the far right-hand side. I can also highlight a chunk here and see all of the uh, particular genes in that area, and it gives me a, a larger heat map here. So again, I can, I can sort of zoom in. If I scroll down here, if I find an interesting area, uh, I might come down here. Oh, there's a lot of red here uh, in this particular area, so I can sort of zoom in on that area and see all the genes there. These are the ones that happen to be highly expressed in the embryonic stem cells. Okay, so I can zoom in on particular areas. Here's an area right here that it looks like they're highly expressed in the IPS uh, genes and some in the ES genes. So I can see all those genes that are in that particular list. What you should know from the case study reading is that if it's a red color, and again, I can come and I can click on that. If it's a red color, that means the gene is highly expressed in that particular cell. So if you look over here, I'll come back to that in a minute. I, I can make these windows a little bigger. Okay, I'm going to click on a place there. So there, are, there I am. I'm in a... Um, let's see if I can make this window just a little bit bigger so we can actually see what it's saying. Again, you can size these windows here, go back there. So I forget where I was. There I am. I'm in an embryonic stem cell. The value of the, I've clicked on a red color, and the value there is 3.16, and that is a median centered value. If I come over here and click on the black, you see that's relatively close to 0, minus 0.14. If I come click on the uh, green, that's a minus four. So again, the red color means it's highly expressed. The black color means uh, it's right at the average uh, or the median in this case. And negative means it's, it's uh, not expressed. It's expressed below the average. So we're looking for those genes that are mostly in, in the red color. Okay. So going back up here, I can go back up to the top. And again, I can click on any, any row there. And I should have about 18,000 or 1,800 rows here and go from there. All right, what we want to do is you're looking for some very specific genes here. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say find genes. The example in the case study says I'm looking for a gene called SYNE2. So I'm going to click on that and hit a search. And it finds that gene for me. I'm going to click on it. And it will now show me the gene. So there you see the gene SYNE2. And what we see there is our data for that particular gene. We can click on it. There's a lot. What this is telling me is that this gene is not expressed very much in the fibroblast and actually not very much in the uh, embryonic stem cells or the IPSs either. So again, I can click on that and go from there. Okay. There may be some genes uh, that, let's see if, uh, let's do a, uh, there's one of the ones I think I asked you for, and what you notice that there are a number of these, the POUF5 genes. Okay, I can click on the top one, hit the next, and it'll go to the next link from there, okay? And, or I can just say all, and it'll show me all of that, okay? So that's how you're going to use this tool. 
And if you have questions, let me know and we'll see what we can do to give you some help. Thanks very much and we'll see you.